Hey everybody, I have graded your um, part four papers um, Sunday and yesterday and then spent the morning doing your discussion boards and have given you feedback for all of those um, assignments in Blackboard. It is so important that as you start wrapping up um, the loose ends on your project that you are reading that feedback and that you're planning um, to make changes in your um, part four, which is really your final um, paper draft and make changes that were recommended before you move on to the poster. Most of the changes in um, part four from, for most of your groups were very minor things. Um, a few odds and ends, APA things, maybe a clarity here or there. What you don't want to do is you don't want to take the content from your paper and drop it onto a poster and still have gaps in your work. So if you receive feedback from me that says, hey, you know, this needs a little more detail or explain this differently or put a citation here. Um, when you look at your poster, you want to make sure that all of the really good ideas from your paper are transferred over into your poster. I've also given you um, a video at the beginning of this week, I guess it was yesterday, that walked you through the design of a professional poster. This process, it literally is um, a slide in a PowerPoint that's formatted using text box text boxes and um, charts and graphs to demonstrate your idea in a way that provides clarity to someone. What you want to do is be thinking about not just the content, which should be accurate at this point because you've um, written and rewritten your paper, um, but also the aesthetics. If this poster were um, blown up to a two by three or a three by four, and that really is the format, you take this P, um, the, the PowerPoint slide, you put it on a flash drive and you take it to a place that does posters and they print it out for you in those large sizes. These are the things that are used in conferences. So once you do that, um, when you take it and you hang it and you're presenting, presenting your content at a um, poster presentation, can somebody walk by your poster and immediately know what you were looking into? Um, are your findings really clear? Is it aesthetic enough that somebody walks by and um, looks at the content and it catches their eye? Is it colorful without being um, blinding? Does it have enough narrative to look scholarly and professional and well supported? But is it not so heavy laden with um, a text that someone has to look really, really hard to read everything? You know, putting everything in 12 font is. Um, not the best approach. Um, my my husband's a scientist by nature, and he goes to um, scientific conferences. And he um, and a colleague of his um, did a poster on a um, a chemistry um, project. And I looked at the poster, and it was nothing but really, really tiny um, graphs and formulas, and really, really tiny font. And my eyes hurt, and I, and I said to him, I said. Um, is anybody going to read this? And he reminded me, he said, Tracy, when um, people are at these um, chemistry conferences, they all look like that. No one wants fluff and pretty and aesthetics. Well, fortunately, we're nurses. Um, and we're all about the, um, the aesthetics as well as the, um, the content. So maybe this is a great example of balancing our art and science of nursing in our presentation method. We really want that poster to be scientifically based. You've used an evidence-based process to research and understand a, um, a nurse sensitive topic. So you've done the science part of it. This is the art part. Um, all you're doing is transferring, um, you may be wordsmithing and formatting what you take from your paper, but you're just making it um, aesthetic. You're making it attractive and interesting to someone who's going to walk by your poster. So I think this is for me, um, this is the most fun part. I would so rather do posters all day than write a paper. This is also 20% of your grade. So um, if you have somebody that's really good at art things in your group um, that has a real eye to detail, let that person take the lead on this. Um, if you have questions or concerns, if you're not sure um, if, if something belongs on the poster or if you're not sure about location, please um, touch base. You can move the boxes around anywhere you want them. You can't delete them. Um, and you have to add aesthetic touches, charts, pictures, graphs that are appropriate, that aren't blurry, um, that are properly cited. You have to add those elements on your own to make your poster interesting. So um, I've given you other the, that um, video, it's about 15 minutes long, that walks you through kind of the step-by-step -step process. It's a, um, it's a screen capture. So be sure that you've looked at that before you finalize your poster. Your discussion boards this week, I just want to touch on that briefly. Um, 
Ms. Crawford and I, when we designed this course, we spent a lot of time talking about what discussion boards should be. And we really feel like the discussion boards should be topic, it should be topics that you have to um, you have to connect with that really are the softer side of nursing. Um, we're, we're pounding in your head, you know, the scientific process. But there's the other part of nursing, which is um, the the emotional part of nursing, the art of nursing, the the other way to look at nursing. And I so appreciate how well and attentive you all were to the topic this week of finding the balance between art and between the art and the science of nursing. Um, your classmate Andrew um, so appropriately described modern day nursing um, at times of feeling like an assembly line. Um, several of you commented that it was a checklist, and that's those are accurate descriptions. And you can kind of feel like. Um, I have no idea why I went into nursing because all I do is I click things on a chart um, and I go into a patient and, you know, I barely have time to talk to them. Um, several of you talked about the, the importance of intentional planning for the art of nursing um, and, and really commented on the challenges of how do I do this if, if nursing feels like an assembly line. Your classmate Isabella um, used the words time limits and the challenge of of really incorporating the art of nursing into the complexity of, and the, it's a real complexity of the science of nursing, of I only have this much time and how am I gonna get all of the things done? How am I gonna click on all the buttons on my um, computer and make sure that I haven't missed an alert and somebody isn't gonna be mad at me or I'm not gonna be in trouble? We really have made it hard um, and we've added those um, time limits we've made it even harder. So Isabella's, Isabella's point of we have real time limits is absolutely accurate. Um, but the other piece of that is, yeah, those are real barriers and those are real practice experiences. But we have to be willing to say, okay, I can acknowledge that, but I'm going to intentionally plan an individual behavior that demonstrates the art of nursing to my patient, to each patient on a daily basis. Maybe it's just a level of kindness, of making sure that the patient can reach their glasses, has their breakfast when it's warm. Those little things are the heart of nursing. They're the things that matter. Um, the um, your, your classmate, Anna, she wrote this in her discussion board reply, and I just love this. She wrote, nurses have to first have a base knowledge, which, which makes the scientific approach so important. But it's the art of nursing that leaves patients and their families feeling like they matter and that they will go home healthier than they were before they came in. Um, I just love the idea of intentionally making your patient feel like they matter, that they aren't in the assembly line, that our time um, that's finite, that we've carved out moments to just be present. And several of you use that concept of being present, of just being still in the room and just spending time. Um, I, I love Anna's um, phrasing of um, how important it is that we make patients feel like they matter and that we can put on the brakes and slow down because they matter to us. I think that's so important. Um, the last thing that, that, that caught me was um, your classmate, Gracie. Gracie wrote, um, and specifically talking about art, she said, every piece of art is unique. And, and like art, so are people. Um, Gracie's getting at the individualized care of, of our patients. And when, when she's describing the uniqueness of artwork, um, that's what makes art is how unique it is and it, how um, different than everything else it is. It doesn't become art if you can put it on an assembly line and, you know, crank it out. It becomes a tchotchke or, or you know, pottery. Um, art is unique. And, our, and, and Gracie's point of connecting it to the people um, is so spot on. No patient you ever have is going to be the same. You may be on a floor that all you do are knee and hip replacements. That's just what you do. But the person in the bed who's having that knee or hip um, um, surgically um, intervened upon, um, they're a different person. Their response to pain, their history of surgeries, their comorbid health conditions, their fear, their anxiety, their mental health conditions, their family, um, all of those things are different. So how important it is that we remember that our patients are pieces of art or people of art, maybe. Um, and we need to be present in that. We need we need to acknowledge that. We may need to make them feel like they value. Um, I hope that this, um, that this discussion board was not overly onerous, um, but that you did pause and think, as a, as a novice nurse, am I already slipping into the check checklist world? Um, is everything feeling like I'm just kind of going through the motions? And sometimes it can be that way. 
and begin to formulate a plan, um, which was the assignment, which was to think strategically, how will I not fall into this so that I lose my heart of nursing because I don't have time to care um, and, and um, be present with my patients. Um, all that stuff was really, really well done. We are wrapping up um, week six this week. Just as a reminder, whoever is submitting your poster this week goes in two places. You got to put it in Blackboard. And then you got to put it in the discussion board. And the reason it's got to go in week seven discussion board is because next week your team is going to be, your um, individually, you're going to be commenting on posters and giving critique and feedback. So know that that's coming. Know that it is a requirement for you to get all of your points for your um, posting your um, assignment. It's got to get on um, both sites. So if you have questions or concerns, holler at me and let me know. Um, I know that the past couple of weeks you've kind of felt like many of you have felt like you're kind of in this churn. It's like this thing will not go away. My hope is that at this point you're, you're kind of having that feeling like, okay, I got it. Um, a few more final, final touches and you know, th this paper's done. And not only is it done, um, but that you're proud of it. Um, I know this is not easy stuff. And I know that, that having this kind of churn of um, re- Evaluating something can be um, can be tedious, can be frustrating. Know that there's purpose in this, and know that if you can just get comfortable with that cycle of feedback, that this grows you, and that, that you can expect this in professional practice and in academic experiences if you move forward. Um, okay. I got to pack up and get to office hours. Um, I hope you guys are well. Please let me know how you are. And if you need something, um, I am here. Take care.